Good afternoon, everyone. This is Willie Nelson with Midwest Heritage Homes team and Keller Williams Putnam Partners. And today I have the privilege of sitting down with a good friend of mine, Mark Squires. Uh, he is the founder of Wise Choice Financial, uh, actually in Independence, Missouri. And Mark, just wanted first to, if you would, just introduce yourself, uh, talk about your company and what services you provide. Well, hello, Willie. Thanks for having me as part of your interview series. Uh, my name is Mark Squires. I'm the president and CEO of Wise Choices Financial. It's Wise Choices. It takes more than one. Uh, started in this business in 2002 after going through about a seven-year period where I lost every family member I had except for my children. And of course, I thank God I still have my children. Um, and didn't know anything about anything and lived in front of a fire hose for several years. Somehow God gave me the, the grace and the ability to understand what I was having to deal with. And, and this was before the days of Google. So I, I had to actually go to that place called a library. You may have heard of those. They're really interesting. Uh, but uh, in that phase of life, I had to become an expert very quickly on things like Medicare and Medicaid and veterans benefits and pension plan payment elections and 401k options. Um, wills, trust, powers of attorney, and I could go on and on and on. Real estate, how to sell commercial real estate. That's why my friend Willie is there because I never want to do any of that again. Um, uh, and so when, uh, and I actually had to quit my job uh, to take care of my dad's family businesses after he passed away. And so when it was time to go back to work, Willie, I decided that I was going to spend the rest of my life or till I turn 84, whichever comes first, uh, helping people navigate these issues that I had to deal with on my own. Uh, one of the worst things you can get when you're in that situation is bad advice because it takes four times as long to undo bad advice as it does to do it right in the first place. Exactly. Uh, doesn't mean I know everything, but I do know everyone and you can attest to that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, it, it's a case where we decided uh, when I started researching this, it became financial services. And so I am by definition, a financial advisor. I hate that term. Uh, legally, anybody can go take a test, get a license and hang a shingle out and call themselves a financial advisor and may not know anything about anything. Uh, so I'm pretty boutique about that. But uh, in going through a really rough time in life, uh, about 2005, after I was in this business, I was going through a very ugly and expensive divorce. And I, I just for something to do, I started working on uh, it was sitting in pharmacies and stores talking to people about Medicare Part D. And Willie, You've known me since well before that time, and it, I got to say, it changed my entire perspective. Uh, meeting people who who wanted to work, who wanted to to do things productive, but because life threw some curveballs at them, like getting hit by a train or in a severe car accident, where they, they couldn't, their their bodies would not let them go and work like you and I can get up and work every day. People who maybe had heart issues or cancers, and and suddenly. Uh, being able to help those people on a day-by-day -day basis understand that confusing thing called Medicare and wade through that alphabet soup uh, gave me a different perspective on my, my silly divorce I was going through was nothing because I could still get up every day, go where I wanted to go, do what I wanted to do, and, uh, and, and help people while I was doing it. Uh, and, and it seems to be the way that my, my career in financial services is gone. I, I get really good at something and I help people. And then all of a sudden, God brings something else in. And that happened very recently. You know, people will refer. I, I don't advertise. You've noticed that. Uh, you're not going to see this face on a billboard anytime soon. And you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you know, nobody wants to see this on a billboard. Um, and so we'll leave that to Rick Edelman. He looks better than me. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, people would refer their grandchildren or friends to me. Good people, good realtors would refer people to me who are wanting to get ready to buy a house. And what we found time after time after time was they were in debt. Oh my goodness, they were in debt. And, and you remember that poem, Willie, you know, if you love something, send it away. If it returns, it's yours forever. If it doesn't return, it was never yours in the first place. Right. That's kind of how I view interest in debt payments. You know, we trade our time and our talent for money. We love that money. But then we turn around and we send up to 40% of our monthly income out the door in terms of interest and debt expense. And it goes on and on and on. And so I began about a year ago, year and a half ago, 
looking for ways we could teach people and help them efficiently get out of debt without doing draconian changes in their life, okay? We're Americans, Willie. We don't do draconian. We're being forced to as we're recording this because we're in the middle of the, the COVID-19 quarantine, whatever we're calling it this week. Uh, so we're, we, but we don't do draconian uh, because we're not good as Americans at self-discipline. Uh, and so I'm looking, how can we help people get out of debt without really messing up their current lifestyle? And in doing that research, I came on to something uh, that was developed, I don't know, 20 years ago called Your Family Bank. And, uh, you know, Willie, if, if you go out to Google and you type in how to get out of debt, there's probably a thousand books you can get that tells you how to do it. There's a very popular radio host who's talking about ways to do it. I have some stuff out there. We talk about how to do it. You know, here's the thing. There's no one single right, perfect way to get out of debt. The right perfect way to do it is the way that works for you, that clicks with your brain, that clicks with your lifestyle. And if you're married, that clicks with your spouse too. That's right. Okay. So we're not saying there's only one way to do it and our way is the right way. We're saying we have a way to do it. But the beauty of your family bank, Willie, is it's flexible. You could do all of it, some of it, or none of it. And you could do great. all of it at the start and 30 days later, 60 days, 90 days later, go, you know, things are a little tight. We want to tweak that a little bit. But the beauty is, in most cases, we can help somebody get completely out of debt, including mortgage and student loans in nine years or less. Now, you know, it's great to tell people don't go in debt, but if you're already in debt, that doesn't help you very much, does it? Right. And the other part of your family bank, Willie, that is the most exciting part, I, mean, I love, we, we just onboarded somebody a couple of weeks ago, 32 years old, he's going to be completely out of debt in 13 months, including his student loans, That's including... He made a pledge to his church of $20,000. He had paid $2,000 on it. And like he said, I know it's a pledge to my church. And I know it's not technically debt, but I, I feel in my heart, I want to make sure that church gets that money. He listed it. And that 13-month period includes the remainder, that about $18,000 to his church. Now, let me tell you, at 32 years old, if he stays with your family bank, and this is the beauty of the backside, is it continues to grow at age 55, when he decides, he said he wants to retire at 55. He's in a very, very physical career. So he said, 55, my body's going to be broken down. Uh, he said, I want to retire. Well, he's going to have over a million dollars in his bank, in his Your Family Bank program, to be able to take his tax-favored income. Now, my compliance department, because I have a securities license, say I can't say tax-free, so you didn't hear me say tax-free. I said tax-favored. But Willie, if you're going to take just for simple math, if you're in a 25% tax bracket and you take $10,000 out and you have to pay taxes on it, that's $2,500 of buying power that just went away. That's right. In tax favored income, we take $10,000 out. Guess what we get to spend? $10,000. So not only are we helping people very simply, very methodically get out of debt, tortoise in the hair. It's methodical. It's slow. Frankly, it's a little boring until you're paying off some debt and all of a sudden you realize, hey, uh, I just freed up $1,500 a month in expenses that I can put for my future. And the beauty of your family bank is if we need to borrow money, we're not going down to the bank to do it. We're borrowing it from ourselves. It continues to stay in our account and draw interest while we're paying our self-interest back. That is using every dollar twice. And that's exactly what the banks do. And we're teaching people to do that on their own. It, it's extremely exciting. So not only are we able to help people with things like Medicare and health insurance and life insurance, we're learning how to help people or we're teaching people how to get out of debt so that we change their present, we change their short-term future, and we change their long-term future. Willie, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine. Um, I think you know him. Uh, his name's Ward. And uh, oh, we were probably in our mid-20s. I was skinny and had hair. That's how long ago it was. And uh, we were talking about retirement. And he, we were talking, you know, we know money was no object, blah, blah, blah. Right. And, uh, and, and I said, you know, I'd like to retire and, and when I'm in my 50s, 40s or 50s. And my definition of retirement, well, it was get up every day and do exactly what I want to do when I want to do it and help people while I'm doing it. And by that definition, I'm almost retired because I, I own this business. I get to do what I want to do. But Willie, every single day, 
I get to participate in something that changes somebody's life for the better. I don't know any better way to live my life than that. That's awesome. So Mark, who would you say, I mean, you've basically, you've told me that you help Medicare, Medicaid, that whole piece. And then well, Medicaid, also, that's, the, that's the government. That's Medicaid. Oh, Medicare. Just is Medicare my great. Perfect. And then I also question, with your family bank, it sounds huh? like you're being able to hit younger. Who would be your ideal client? You know, that is, is such a broad paintbrush. Uh, and, and I hesitate to say anybody uh, because, you know, we're, we're not in the business of fogging mirrors over here. If your breathing doesn't necessarily mean you're the ideal client. Uh, we do really, really well with young people who are looking at or are concerned about building their financial future. Uh, a lot of my colleagues in this business have minimums. You know, if you don't have 50,000, 100,000, 250,000, we just don't want to work with you. Well, I understand the scale of that economy. I really do. But we love working with young people who are just getting started. We love teaching people about the foundation of investing, the foundation of finances. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're in an environment right now, what are we, north of 15% unemployment? And when people are, are losing their jobs and they have those 401ks, 403bs, whatever those retirement plans are with their company, uh, we do really well helping people build safety nets with that. I, I think if you said, Mark, in, in two words or less, what do you do? I would say safety nets. You know, we build safety nets around people's assets and resources so that when the market turns down, they have a soft place to land. You know, I don't know if you would agree with me or not, but most people will, will agree that walking on a tightrope could be a thrilling and life-changing experience, or it could be a horrifying and even deadly experience. Right. Well, what are the variables? Well, the first variable is how high is that tightrope off the floor? Because if it's laying on the floor, you might twist your ankle or break your ankle, but that's about as bad as it's going to get, and that's bad enough. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, but how you view money and what your risk tolerance is, is how high that tightrope is. Second variable is how good is your teacher? Look, if your teacher's last name is Walenda, you probably have quite a bit of confidence to learning how to walk across that tightrope. Now, it may just be across your bathtub and not the, not the Grand Canyon, but still, you're going to have some confidence there. That's right. And, and I'm kind of like the teacher in that area. as a financial advisor. It's, it's to help people identify where their risk level, I call it the heartburn line, you know, how, how much money can you lose before you get heartburn? How much money can you make before you get heartburn? Uh, and then most importantly, and, and I submit this, the most important part of that, that variable in that equation is how big and how well anchored is your safety net? And see, if we don't start with the foundation, just like you sell homes, right. if you go look at a home that doesn't have a good foundation uh, and you're touring that, you may just want to get the heck out of there as quickly as possible before it falls on your head. It's right. the same thing with, with, an, with investing in financial success. You have to start with a set of plans. Once you have a set of plans, you determine how much strength do you need in that foundation. Then you build the foundation. Then you put the walls up. Then you put the roof up. And, and there's things that a lot of advisors don't look at. It's not all about money, believe it or not. Um, if you don't have your estate plan in place, at the very least, a healthcare power of attorney, a durable power of attorney, and a will. People say, Mark, I don't need a will. I don't have anything. Well, yeah, you do. Because believe it or not, the state has a will for you, and it may not match what your desires are. And unfortunately, when we pass away, we still have to have somebody in charge. And I would rather have somebody I pick in charge than the state. Uh, not that I just, 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 just trust the state, but, you know, just is what it is. Um, so you have to have that in place. Uh, if you have some assets, how are you going to pass those on if something happens? Uh, I remember several years ago, one of my clients, uh, oh, I think their net worth was probably somewhere in the $250,000 range. And I paired him up with an attorney and he said they need a trust. And they're like, we don't have enough to need a trust. We can bypass probate. He said, well, each of you has a million dollars in life insurance. And you, at the time, I think their daughter was four. They said, if something happens to the two of you, wouldn't you like to leave some instructions for how that million dollars is spent? Now think about that. If you have a house, a home, if you have some life insurance, a retirement plan, and you have younger children and something happens to both of you, don't you want to leave somebody in charge that you trust? That's why you need to get those estate planning. They'd be the equivalent of building a house and not putting a roof on it. Right. Now, who in the world would do that? Nobody that I know and nobody I want to know. Yeah. So 
Uh, so our ideal client is, you know, we like the young people because we're able to help them through the phases of life. Uh, but we also enjoy working with people all the way up to, you know, age 85 and north. My oldest client's 103 years old and still mows his grass. Uh, just before we got on this, uh, I was talking to a gentleman whose mother is one of my clients. She's 101 and still works a couple of days a week in her shop. Uh, so you know, we love all those people. But really, where we get our kick out of it is, is helping people build safety nets, build their financial future, and when they already have their financial life in order, making sure we have a safety net around their assets and resources. So if the worst case scenario, whatever that is for them, comes about, they are not financially devastated. That's great. So um, you're my finance guy. So give me a few yeah. tips. We're, in, we're sitting in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Do people pull from their 401ks right now? Do they, like what's some good and strong advice um, mm -hmm. among friends? First of all, there is a difference between patience and procrastination. And we do advise people, don't make knee-jerk reactions. If you've been working with me, you already have a plan for this type of a thing. Uh, you're not really losing sleep over it. Uh, but the other side of that is, is this fear that turns into procrastination. And the absolute worst thing you can do right now is procrastinate making a decision. Whether that's to call your current advisor or reach out to another advisor to get a second opinion, look, um, we just, in, in January, uh, we're in Kansas City, our football team, the Chiefs, became the Super Bowl champions. And everybody in the country knows the name Patrick Mahomes, and, and you know, they know the other names of the guys who were on the TV screen. But do you realize that there were a whole bunch of guys sitting on the bench just in case? That's okay. Right. If you have a financial advisor you love, it doesn't hurt to have another advisor on the bench just to look things over and be there just in case. In fact, one of our, uh, one of the, the, uh, the clients that we have who I've been sitting on the bench for a number of years just called me a few weeks ago and said, I think it's time that we change our philosophy. And this fortunately was before the huge market downturn. He recognized that, you know, he's now in his late seventies and accumulates. There's four phases to the life of your money. The first, you know, is where everybody wants to focus is on accumulation. Well, preservation is part of that too. Uh, and he, you know, when you get to a certain place, you need to start thinking about preservation. That's kind of like that roof on the house um, that we were talking about. Uh, so first and foremost is don't procrastinate getting an opinion, talking to somebody, even if somebody's watching this interview a year or two years from now, and, and we're outside of this whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic and, and oil at, uh, at negative $30 a barrel, which is where it was last time I looked up at that computer screen uh, with the market down. You know, today the market's down 2%. Look, that's the second piece of advice. Do not overreact. Let me ask you a question, Willie. Um, if you were driving by your favorite store, what's your favorite store to shop at? Kohl's. Kohl's. So you're driving by Kohl's. And out in front of Kohl's is a huge banner that is as long as the store itself. And it says, everything inside, 2% off. Are you going to slam on the brakes and make a turn go into Kohl's to go shopping? No, sir. Okay, well, when the market's down 2%, <laughs> it's not time to panic. Now the market's down 18, 12, 20%. You don't want to panic anyway, but you still need to start looking at things. But if it's down 2%, pretty good chance the market might bounce back up 2% tomorrow. Don't overreact. Look at where you're at, patiently make a plan, adjust your plan if you have one, and then move forward. But whatever you do, don't procrastinate. And the last one point I'm going to give you, Willie, for this part of it is always keep your exit strategy in mind. Now, extra strategy for a business person might be, what am I going to do when I decide to retire? Uh, a lot of business people now are going, my extra strategy is, what do I do when things go south? Okay. But in terms of investing, you have to decide how much is enough. And unfortunately, although he's well quoted, uh, Mr. Rockefeller, who was asked how much money is enough, his answer was reportedly, and I wasn't there, I know I look like I'm that old, but his answer was afforded just one more dollar. Folks, that is not an appropriate answer. How much is enough? Decide on that. And when you approach that, start making moves, okay? Maybe you decide when you're 50 
that X is enough, but when you get that amount built up, you decide, you know, there's been inflation and there's some, a few different things that we want to do. Okay, maybe we decide that it's X 2.0, it's a little bit more. We can increase a little bit, a whole lot better than we can increase a lot, but if we never determine how much is enough, we're never going to get there. Get in the car and start driving. If you don't know what your destination is, you got to go 24,902 miles to get back where you're at. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody does. Those are my tips. Awesome. Mark, thank you again for uh, spending time with us. Now, if anyone that's watching this interview wants to find you, can you give this, how do they yeah, get a hold of you? Sitting right here, Willie. If they want to find me, I'm sitting here. Uh, and where's Willie? here? <laughs> oh. Well, it's not there. Uh, so um, currently my office is in Independence, Missouri. Uh, our phone number, the best way to reach us is on the phone. And that's at 816-841-9141. I'm going to read it again. 816-841-9141. Our website is www.wcf-kc.com. www.wcf-kc.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can even send me a message on Facebook. And whenever I get around to checking it, I'll answer you. That's, we're kind of everywhere all the time. Perfect. Again, that's Wise Choices Financial. Yes. 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 So if they are bringing, for finding you on Facebook, that's how they're going to do it. And it's Mark yes. Squires. Guys, thank Mark, you so much. On Facebook is Mark A. Squires. Mark A. Squires. Um, there, there's another advisor in Texas who is also Mark Squires. And so he and I have agreed in back channels that he is Mark D and I'm Mark A. Um, and that has had a tendency to, uh, to eliminate some confusion. I am understanding he's a nice guy. He's just not as good looking as me. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's how we get over this. So I'm Mark A Squires. If you look at Wise Choices Financial, we're there. Perfect. Thank you so much again, Mark. Thanks, Willie. Have a great